So, here it is, the much anticipated and much debated AFL Performer 8. I almost said awful. I'm going to have to watch myself through this whole video to say AFL. Did AFL do it again? Did they produce an even better performer that will disrupt another segment of the IEM market? They certainly hit the magic price point at $369, right between the Moondrop Blessing 3 and the Nunu SA6 Mark II. Eight drivers, one dynamic, two mid-BAs, two treble BAs, and a custom tweeter BA, plus the sophisticated crossover system from the P5, upgraded for the additional drivers, and an even more complex and considerably longer set of 3D printed tuning tubes, a very similar attractive package with almost identical, though just slightly larger, shells, and an excellent cable, slightly less heavy than the P5. Though still, only single-ended. When will they learn? Some of us would really appreciate the balanced option. And what appears to be a leather hat box style case. I replaced the cable with a KB Ears Graphene Plus Copper Silver 4.4 millimeter balanced. And I'm using the SpinFit W1 Silver Tips or the K-Bear K7 Blues, both of which work well with the P8. So it comes down, as always, to sound. What kind of listen does the Performer 8 provide? I'm pretty sure that the Performer 8 will require a follow-up review after a longer listening time. I've only had it not quite a week, and as AFL says in their little instruction booklet, the dynamic driver is not even warmed up yet. I think they mean burned in. The implication is that the performance of the dynamic driver will improve after the first 100 hours or so of normal listening. I don't have more than 20 hours on it so far. And I can't compare the P8 to the Blessing 3 or the Dunu SA6. I don't have, and am unlikely to ever have, either, as I had to promise myself that I would not buy any more IEMs for a year, or no more expensive ones at least, in order to convince myself to spend $369 on an IEM, over 400 by the time I added a balanced cable. Even at this point, though, I can say that, to my ears, the P8 sounds completely different than any other IEM I have ever heard, and that includes the P5. But you might want to watch till the end to get my full assessment. The P8's bass is not the deepest, or at least not the most rumbly I have heard, but it is a sound that goes beyond solid, incisive, authoritative, not to be ignored. On a well-recorded track, the notes do not just slam and thud. Each hit or pluck is clearly articulated with a sharp attack, a blooming, deep, textured main note, and a realistic decay before the next note sounds. Notes do not run into each other and blend into rumble. They remain whole and sound together to form a swarm of bass notes like buzzing bees. It is really something to hear on tracks like Bass Drops from Niad Vasilik's Bass Room or Poem of the Chinese Drum from Hawkman Yim or even on Jeff Castellucci's voice on Icy Fire, and it certainly contributes harmonics to the richness of the mid-range as well. And there is considerable energy in the mid-bass, so that acoustic bass and cello, for instance, seem to go all the way down to the floor. You might not suspect this if you just look at the graphs, more on that later, but I assure you, whatever they did with the dynamic driver and the long, thin bass tubes in the shell worked. The bass is simply stunning. Then I would be tempted to say that the mids, vocals, and instruments are forward, except they're not. They are actually well in balance for the bass, but they are what I might call super present. The clarity and articulation of the voices, both male and female, is startling. They are right there when close mic'd, and suspended in appropriate space when in ensemble. Listen to the harmonies on Home Freeze, Stargazer Lilies or the constellation of male voices on My Mother Told Me from the Polish sea shanty group Pearly i Lotry, or one of my favorites for this kind of thing, the harmonies between Alison Krauss and Robert Plant on either of their albums. Listen to the smoky, intimate voice of Diana Kral on Crimea River, or the silk over rough fingers texture of Carol Dubach's voice on Smile from the album of the same name. And while you're at it, Take a moment to admire the intricate interplay of the instruments behind the voice. And speaking of, 
Cello, flute, violin are all just like the voices right there. You hear every nuance. It seems every single vibration individually. And they never do bleed into or cover each other. They just sing together in perfect harmony to produce as close to a live performance as I have ever heard. Listen to Guy Fishman's raw cello on Vivaldi's violin concerto in D major, or the amazing interplay of bluegrass instruments on Bella Fleck's vertigo. Try the interplay of cello and fiddle on the new Haas album from the Haas sisters. If you love guitar or piano, the performer eights present both with such clarity and detail that it's impossible to think of anything else and listen at the same time. The music demands your attention and rewards it so thoroughly that it was hard when I was trying to ABIMs for this review. I did not want to stop listening to the P8. Lately for guitar, I've been listening to Tom Caulfield's albums, as well as Eric Tingstadt and William Coulter. For piano, try Hope Floats by Jennifer Dufresne or any of the Brooklyn duo's work. The Piano Guy's new release, In the Stars, is also impressive. The treble, besides its contribution to the vocal and instrumental band, simply soars. The high notes on the flute or violin, or the occasional voice that goes that high, are sharp enough to pierce the ceiling or your eardrum, but they do not. They go right through cleanly and painlessly and touch something in your brain. Listen to Christian, there's that name again, violin on Johann Eulen's Infinite Bach, or Jenny Oates Baker's Fiddle on a Shokin Farewell from the Lyceum Philharmonic, or listen to Bodhi's flutes on surrounding mountains. The high notes and the high harmonics make the P8 perhaps less suited for casual listening, since, as I have said, they demand your attention. I find, for instance, that I cannot read and listen to the P8s at the same time. Those high notes require that I put the book down and listen to the whole of the music to keep them in balance. But then, what a treat when I do. So, is the Performer 8 a bright IEM? Yes, it is. Quite bright indeed. Is the Performer 8 a mid-centric vocal and instrumental IEM? Yes, it is, with more detail than I have yet heard. Will the Performer 8 satisfy all but the hardest core of bass heads? Yes, I think it will. Quality over quantity. The Performer 8 is simply so well balanced that you don't hear any emphasis on any band, but you also never hear any lack. The whole spectrum is just wow. But the sound of the Performer 8 goes well beyond the sound signature or balance of individual frequencies. The way it represents harmonics is nothing short of spectacular and contributes to a sound that is vivid, so alive, so rich and commanding that it continually surprises you, continually highlights something you might not have heard yet in the music to delight you. The Performer 8 creates a musical space that is, in my experience, unique. When I listen, I'm no longer wherever I happen to be. I am there, in the music, in the space where it was created, even if that space was only ever in the mind of the musician or the mixing engineer. This goes beyond soundstage, which is spacious, or instrument placement, which is accurate, to a harmonic whole, a sound space or soundscape that is simply impressive, impressing, immersive. Again, demanding your attention, rewarding every moment. Listen to something like Perpetual Emotion's Flying Tent, or the interplay of cellos on two cellos, cello verse, or an orchestral work like Strauss's Die Fieldemaus from the Vienna Philharmonic's 2022 New Year's Concert Album. This is not a close mic ensemble. It's classical orchestra. So turn up the volume so the opening bars are concert loud, and then surrender to the sound of the auditorium or, in a similar way, surrender to the ambient soundscape with its nature sounds of gathering dawn from Bodhi, or the even more natural sounds of rejuvenated from David Arkenstone. Perhaps it is something like focus in photography. I'm a photographer, and I appreciate a perfectly focused image that shows, say, the breast feathers of a bird, every shaft and bar right down to the finest tips. But many of my photos are just slightly out of focus. Not enough so most people would notice. You can still see the feathers in more detail than we're used to. But when you compare it to a perfectly focused image, there's just more there, more to draw the eye in, more to satisfy our love of texture and pattern. That's the way it is when comparing the P8 with all my other IEMs, including the P5. The P8 is just 
better focused, and reveals the finest nuances, every shaft and barb of the music, and that is a delight to my ears. The Performer 5 was a great IEM, but it was, so to speak, nothing special. Well, maybe except for the price. It was an incremental upgrade from 100 or even 150 or even $200 IEMs, but it did not do anything different than they did. It just did it slightly better, enough better to justify the jump in price, and considerably more. The Performer 8 is, to my ear, something special. It carries you out of the realm of the ordinary IEMs I have heard so far into new acoustic territory. I'm not kidding. That's what I hear. Or to put it another way, compared to the P5 or any other IEM I have heard, it is like with the P5 you're listening to the music through a wide open door or window. With a P8 you're right in the room. It's not something you notice while listening to the P5, but you certainly do notice it when you switch to the P8. Going back to the P5 it just slightly diminishes the music. Now, as I say, this might be just how VidFi 300 to $1,000 IEM sound. That clarity and presence might be there in the Blessing 3 or the Dunu SA6 or the Kiwi Ears Orchestra for that matter, but I have not heard those IEMs. To me, the AFL Performer 8 is a continual surprise and pleasure at a price I can just barely afford or justify. If the sound of an IEM gets any better than this, I don't really want to know. I can't afford to know. And before I go, a word on those graphs. I don't do graphs. I don't have the equipment, and I'm not about to buy it. But I am learning to read them. There are some comparison graphs out there that show both the P5 and the P8. Don't believe them, or at least don't take them at face value. Here's one from Giz Audio Squigglink. Thank you, Timmy. From this graph, you might think that the P8 has way less bass and treble energy than the P5. However, my impression is that the bass on the P8, while of a different quality altogether than the P5, has about the same volume, the same amount of energy. If you then normalize the graphs at 800 Hz instead of 500, you get this, which is a much better representation of what my ear hears when comparing the two. The same bass, though again not the same quality. Elevated mids on the P8, or scooped out mids on the P5, and smoother, slightly more energetic and more extended treble on the P8. That's closer to what I hear. When I was in the optics industry, I used to tell people that you can use measurements to help explain the performance of a product, but you cannot use measurements to predict how a product will perform in front of your eyes, or in your ears in the case of IEMs. To more or less conclude, is the Performer 8 worth $369? Short answer, to my ears and for critical, concentrated listening, it is. It's just a delightful revelation of sound and an almost pure pleasure. And think of it this way. It has the bass performance and rich texture of the Kiwi Ears Quartet, $109. Yes, there's some debate on that IEM, but that's the way my ears hear it. The flowing, present, realistic mids, vocals, and instruments of the Letchure Galileo, $109. The precision and clarity of the Letchure S12 Pro, but with more musicality, $135 on sale. A better sense of space and stage than my CVJ Me, $59. And build quality and accessories and technical innovation to equal my AFL Performer 5, $189 now on sale. So I could have, or maybe even should have, just spent the $369 on the AFL Performer 8 and have been done with it. And I would have gotten the unique sense of space and presence that only the Performer 8, in my experience, provides as an added bonus. And I would have saved money in the bargain. Though, let me say once more, and then I'll be done. The Performer 8 is not an easy listening IEM. There are lots of those out there. The P8 demands your full attention. For those times, you want to get everything, every nuance and every delight there is out of the music. I don't think this will ever be my or your favorite casual listening IEM. And the P8 is totally unforgiving of poor recordings and poor mixes. It will highlight everything wrong about a recording, just as it highlights everything right. If a recording has muddy bass, you're going to hear really muddy bass. 
If a recording has weird peaks in the treble and raspy vocals, you are going to hear every peak and every rasp. However, with good recordings, in those times you are willing to give yourself up to the music, the performer ache will reward every moment. So yes, AFL has done it again proved that their advanced technology and acoustic know-how will provide a whole new experience of music at a price more folks can afford or are willing to pay. Perhaps another disruptor. This is, I'm thinking, a very good thing. So, what will AFL do next? Maybe my wallet will recover in time to find out. And maybe not. <laughs> <laughs>